Okay, to the application layer. Okay, so application layer uh, uh, applications <laughs> include uh, things like web browsing, email, P2P, and, you know, uh, file transfer, on and on and on. Okay, all the things you do. Uh, applications occur on hosts, uh, and the hosts really do want the network just to disappear. You know, you really want to not even have to uh, worry about it. Okay, so we're going to look at a couple of these, um, HTTP maybe and SMTP. But it's important to remember, okay, the protocol itself, say HTTP. Okay, what is HTTP used for? Where do you use that protocol? Mm -hmm. Web, okay, for web browsing, for example. Okay, but if you think about the application of web browsing, HTTP is only a small part of that, right? Mm -hmm. You have your web browser, you have the protocol, you have all the software that goes into that, okay? So there's a lot more involved than just the protocol itself. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, client server model. Okay, what does this mean? So we have a client, we have a server. Okay, so we have a, some interaction on the network. We have a client, one's a client, one's a server. How do I know which is which? Which one's the client? Uh, it depends on the application. Typically, if we're thinking of the client-server model, we can clearly identify one guy as the client, one guy as the server. Suppose you're browsing the web, okay? Who's the client, who's the server? My web browser is the client, the server is the server. It's nice how that works, right? The server is actually the server. Okay, but how do I know that? How do I know the client is the client? How do I know the web browser is the client? The client's making the request. Yeah, okay, so the way I would say that is the client speaks first, okay? The client is the one making the request, requesting some resource or some something, okay, from the server. And then the server is the one who is there to serve us, okay? So the server is the one who's there to try to respond or fulfill the request. So think about it, the web browser, you're making the request, the server is trying to provide that information, okay? Uh, hosts can be either clients or servers, so you know on the edge of the network we have servers, we have clients, you know, we have uh, everybody. Uh, so and web browsing being our example we just talked about, right? Okay, so you're the client if you make the request and the server is the server. Uh, okay, so the alternative to the client-server model is peer-to-peer -peer where everybody can be almost everybody can be either a client or a server or both, okay? So, you know, for example, if you're trying to share music, right, on the internet, you could go to somebody, and you could request some music file, and if they're willing to share, you can get that file. In that case, you are the, you're the client, and they're the server. At the same time, you might have a file that somebody else is requesting, and you're willing to share, and they can take that and you're acting as a server on that interaction, and they're acting as the client. So you are both client and server, and you could be doing that at the same time. Okay. Uh, now, the one interesting thing about peer-to-peer, -peer or one of the interesting things, is you know how do you find the server? <laughs> Who's got the data that you're looking for? And there's lots of different architectures, you know, some being very centralized, so it's easy. You basically go someplace and look up who's got it, and then you go find them and see if they're willing to give it to you. And some are very distributed, okay? There's no really central database that you can go to and find it. You have to sort of broadcast your information out and look for it, hope somebody responds, and that sort of stuff. Isn't it easier if you have a centralized place to go? It certainly can be easier to find your data, less network traffic and such, just go there, and then they tell you where to go. You go and you get your information, right? But that's not so popular today. Much more popular are the more distributed forms. Uh, so why do people use these more distributed forms? Well, if the server goes down, <laughs> and it's harder to target who's the ringleader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, protection. Yeah, okay. So. Uh, it's really an issue, the reason it came about is because, uh, you know, lots of times what they're doing is not so legal, so people would try to shut them down. And if there's a central server there, it's easy to target them and try to shut them down. If it's distributed out, you know, it's hard to shut down. And that's 
really why these things evolved that way. But that's an interesting uh, topic. We're not going to look too much at that. Uh, okay, so HTTP. Again, this is used for web browsing. Okay, so it's the uh, hypertext transfer protocol. So here's the idea. You make a request, and then the server gives you a response. <laughs> Couldn't be any more generic than that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so you're the client, this uh, web server here is the server. Okay, now what about the issue of web cookies? It's kind of an interesting little security uh, topic here. How does this work? You're the client, you go to the server, make a request, the server does what? It issues a cookie, okay, and gives that to your browser. And all this happens behind the scenes, so you don't really even have to be aware of it. It gives you a uh, cookie, and what's the purpose of that cookie? Well, okay, it's going to keep track of this cookie, right? It's going to put it in a database, and it's going to keep track of stuff that you do, all right? So it knows what you did in this particular transaction. So maybe you went there, I went there and I looked at all kinds of security bugs, okay? So it puts that information, stores it away. Now I come back later, and as soon as I go to make that request, my browser automatically takes the cookie and puts it in this, uh, in this uh, request, and it looks up in that database and it says, oh, this guy, he likes uh, security bugs, and so Amazon.com says, hey, Mark Stamp, you know, here's some new security bugs, take, take a look at these. Okay. So the point here is that HTTP is stateless. Even within an interaction, it's stateless. It's not keeping track of anything. And this is a way that you can add some sort of state uh, across, even across transactions, okay, across interactions here. So it's kind of a nifty uh, feature. Uh, again, the browser manages the cookies. You don't have to worry about that. That's all good. Uh, and the server can remember stuff about you, okay. Okay, so what are cookies used for? You know, all the stuff you know and love, you know, shopping carts, recommendations, and so on. And we did mention, you know, it's kind of tempting to use it as a form of authentication. You really shouldn't. It's not designed for such, and not secure by any means, but, you know, it's there. Uh, it's just the way it works in the real world, right? It's there, it's available, it's tempting, somebody's going to use it. Uh, there are some privacy concerns. So uh, a website could learn something about you because of all that information it's got stored in its database. That's probably not such a big deal if you're going to that website. You should expect they're going to learn something about you. But I guess the bigger concern would be what happens if several websites get together and pool their information, right? They could learn a lot of information about you potentially. Uh, okay, SMTP. Uh, this is used to send email from server to server, so sort of inside the network itself. This is how your email gets from point A to point B. And then when you actually want to get the mail to the server or from the server, a different protocol is involved, or from the server, a different protocol would be involved. So it's like this. I send my email. Uh, it goes to uh, my email server and then uh, through the network, SMTP is used to get it where it needs to go. And then they use some other protocol to actually pull the e email from their server. Uh, okay, now SMTP, the S stands for simple. It is pretty simple. Okay, you can actually, the, uh, the, the commands that it uses are human readable. Okay, so you can actually read what it's doing. Um, I like to do this in real time, but I can't because they, uh, this network won't let me tell that to this uh, particular <coughs> server for some reason. I can do it from my office, but I can't do it from here. But anyway, so I could, you know, I could type in this stuff. So I could just tell them. I can tell that directly to this mail server. And the 25 says what? SMTP. It's a port number. It's pr the protocol is SMTP. Okay, so I'm using SMTP here, and that's the port number it's going to be watching for. And it says, okay, this is ENIAC, uh, and, and then I type, hello, okay, hello, you know, I'm introducing myself. I am ca.gov, and it says, hello, CA. pleased to meet you, I love that, it's pleased to meet me. It's, it's very polite, it's a very polite. <laughs> and then I type in, so I'm typing the red stuff here, so mail from, and then I say who it's from, 
And it says, oh, that's okay. And then I say who it's to, and it says, oh, that's okay too. And then I type in actual data. Okay, and I can type anything I want here. And then to end it, I just put a, a dot on a line by itself and hit return. Done. So I quit, and I'm done. So what just happened here? Yeah, I sent a mail from Arnold at ca.gov to stamp at cs. And it says, you're terminated. Oh my god, I'm going to get this email. It's going to say I'm terminated. I'm gonna, what am I going to do? So what's going on here? How come I can send this bogus email? And anybody can send a bogus email who can you know, tell that to the server, or any server, any SMTP server for that matter. Isn't that bad, right? Wouldn't, you, wouldn't it be better if you could not send bogus emails like this? <clears throat> What's the problem here? What makes it possible to do this? There's no authentication. Authentication is the problem, right? If you have no authentication, you have no idea who created this. And there's no reason to have any confidence that it came from whoever it says it came from. And that's the way all your emails send. So, you know, it's very easy to send uh, bogus emails like this. Uh, and really an issue of authentication. 